Hello everybody, welcome to DevConf. Uh, my name is Davide Caratti and I work for uh, Red Hat in the networking services team and I'm based in Milan. And uh, my work is mostly focused on uh, Red Hat Enterprise uh, Linux. Today I want to share uh, with you step by step where I'm at with the, the attempts of uh, putting continuous integration uh, in uh, uh, TC. Uh, I assume most of you know what TC is. Is uh, a component in the Linux uh, kernel that uh, uh, implements uh, traffic schedulers, packet uh, classification, and uh, packet mangling. In details, we are going to briefly see how unit tests can be written uh, within the TDC suite. And then we will see an example implementation for the BPF action, which is kind of trendy. Then uh, we will see how, to, how this test case and the whole TDC can be automated um, in a way that every single patch uh, targeting the NetDev mailing list uh, can run this simple unit test with the purpose of uh, avoiding uh, regression and uh, under, um, undesired behaviors. So I chose to use patch U to automate the test and summarize the test results. Um, we will overview the setup of the whole test system and see an example report. Uh, next, we will overview what can be the future developments uh, for the TDC test suite and for patch U as well. Finally, if uh, there are any questions and uh, they are easy enough, I will be happy to try and answer. So, uh, why am I doing this? And why do I think it's useful? Uh, as you might know, TC code is in Linux uh, since many years. So theoretically, <coughs> we would not expect to see so many breakages over time. But the reality is different because uh, the TC code is constantly being expanded and improved and sometimes rewritten because uh, um, there are many users of TC. Uh, um, I want to mention time-based transmission, which is a, a new Q discipline, which has been uh, added by Intel. And uh, also I want to mention OVS offloads because OpenVSwitch is uh, using uh, uh, the TC layer to offload classifying and actions to their NICs. Uh, so one of the strongest proposals for uh, people working on Linux is try to avoid the breakage, breaking things. So any change of behavior should be done on purpose and uh, uh, any change and any improvement should be designed to be backwards compatible. So unless it's a bug, the current behavior needs to be preserved. And as you probably already know, CI is one of the answer to this kind of needs. Uh, about two years ago, TDC, uh, was uh, uh, pushed uh, to the upstream Linux uh, and then it started introducing self-test on the TC layer and more recently <coughs> Patch project landed upstream to provide uh, a continuous integration for the uh, QEMU project. So before going on, it's worth mentioning the guys that, who wrote uh, most of the code I'm using for this presentation. So kudos and thanks to the authors of TDC and namely to Alexander, Lucas, Chiara, and Roman from uh, Mojatatu. And of course, many thanks uh, to the authors of Patch U. Uh, working, they work for the QMU project, uh, particularly thanks to Paolo Monzini and Fan Zeng. Uh, last but not least, kudos are for you in case you plan to contribute to open source, and particularly to TDC and Patch U. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done, um, especially if you are new uh, to the Linux kernel community like I am, writing a self-test is definitely a good way for being onboarded. So this is a, a mail that David Miller sent to uh, one of uh, my mates, and it's quite self-explaining. Serious applied. So I assume uh, most of you have basic knowledge of what TC is, and uh, um, in any case, uh, um, there's a lot of documentation on the web, on the man pages, 
And uh, a fun fact is also TDC as a source for documentation uh, if you have uh, troubles in uh, configuring some TC rule. Anyway, uh, what's relevant here is the interface that programs use when they communicate with the kernel. It's all made of um, netlink messages that carry uh, inside the configuration data. Uh, you can try to get an idea of how big is this configuration space and you try this common. So, you just try to show the simplest option in the kernel and see what kind of messages travel inside. And this is the message. It's a big netlink message carrying data. And after that, consider we have these objects, 35 Q disks, 12 classifier and 15 actions, maybe counting because I know of people writing more QDisks and more actions. So with this space of configuration, the probability of breaking something is not negligible. Now, let's take a real example and assume we want to unit test the BPF action. Uh, let's install a dummy eBPF program, program that is going to be executed on the uh, data plane. For example, uh, we want to mangle packets uh, uh, one by one when they are transmitted. So we install this program and then we query the kernel back to see if the program has been correctly installed. So we are doing a TC action add with the, uh, specifying uh, the program. And then we do a TC action done to see if the program has been installed correctly. We will be invoking these methods in the control path of the action. We will be uh, enclosing in the uh, netlink messages the, the following parameters which are specific to the BPF action. And we will also use this kind of parameters that are, that are common to all TC actions. Okay, this unit test and uh, many others like this are covered currently by TDC. So you just need to push D to the TC testing folder in the Linux source tree. And there you can just list all the test cases available for the BPF action and selectively run um, uh, one test on, uh, or do them all. And let's see how test cases are written. Each TC action, every filter, and every QDisk has a dedicated list of unit tests. So, uh, briefly, a uh, unit test is made of a command under test that we launch. There is an expected exit code. We issue a verify command and check if the match pattern matches match count time. So back to our, our unit test example, uh, we assume we did the, the, all the setup phase where all BPF action has been cleared. This is the command under test with the, you know, we check the expected exit code, which should be zero. We issue the verify command and we check for the match pattern and the match count. It's quite really easy. So that's it. That's it what, what is the uh, TDC. The test infrastructure can be extended, the, the possibility to use the uh, plugins. So we put some variants on the setup. We can use namespaces, we can use uh, virtual ethernets, or we can use tools like Valgrind or KMLeak to find memory leaks. So uh, TDC, the number of TDC test cases is growing as uh, the Linux kernel uh, evolves. And, uh, mm, uh, please note that QDisks are not tested yet. Coverage will be um, introduced this year. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And uh, like I mentioned before, contributions in, in this area are very welcome. So uh, now that we know how to write a unit test, uh, let's see how this, to do the CI part. For this thing, there is Patchu. Uh, why Patchu? Why did I choose Patchu? Because it's new and I like new things. It's open source, of course, and it's used by another big project. So it's kind of a good thing. This diagram summarizes um, the architecture used by Patchu. Uh, there is an importer node that checks for new emails, 
and uh, uh, it pushes information to a server, which holds a, a dashboard, um, and pushes to a Git repository, every patch that is received. Then there is a tester that pulls the server, gets new patches, uh, clones a repository from the Git repository, and it simply does the test. So let's see how a patch is processed. Uh, at the very beginning, somebody sends a message to a, to a mailing list, and uh, there uh, is a mail client that pulls for new content, checks for new messages, uh, it checks if it contains a patch, and similarly to what is done inside Patchwork, uh, it recognizes the follow-up, so the reviewed, the tested, uh, the uh, hacked by, and uh, it stores the, 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 these information. So um, the importer applies locally the patch and tries to push it to a mirror uh, of the Linux kernel, which is uh, currently in my GitHub. And after that, it creates a tag. Well, if the push operation <coughs> has been successful, the importer then updates the status in the server like this. So the, if the push is successful, the importer puts the G uh, status flag the G is blue, so um, the application has been successful. It can be gray in case the uh, application is not, the patch does not apply. Uh, so uh, the importer is also able to understand follow-ups. So if somebody reviews the patch, it applies the R flag. And if the patch is uh, uh, superseded by a new patch, patch you understand it and puts the O flag. And in, in case there is a series, uh, the series may be incomplete, it <coughs> the question mark. And uh, okay, now it's time to see how if our patch did pass the test. So the, the tester periodically pulls for um, um, new patches, untested patches, and simply clones the tag uh, locally. It compiles the kernel, uh, it launches a virtual machine with the, that kernel, and runs the test. So if the test uh, goes OK, there is a, a green T flag. And otherwise, there is a red T flag, like in this case. And that's how the dashboard looks like after the importer applied three patches and tested two of them without finding any issue. You can click on the subject and have Look like looks like this, and since I'm logging in the project, I can reset some of these flags to redo the test or to redo the apply log. So um, here is a, how I managed to install Patchu. Uh, did it work well? Well, uh, uh, the scripts I used to create the tester are on my GitHub. During this, present, this, this uh, work, the traffic on NetDev mailing list was almost zero because there was a long period where the branch was closed, so no patch was flying. Uh, and also, many TDC test cases were broken. And what is strange is that the breakage happened very recently, in the last month. So we, we want really to make this stable. So the current state is there uh, is uh, no dashboard on the official patch uh, I have a draft dashboard with semi-broken importer that it's uh, uh, working uh, at the um, unstable patch uh, branch. Stay tuned because in the next days I'm going to put it online with uh, live test. What's next? Uh, for TDC, a lot of things. Uh, we are planning to do functional tests on the data part, injecting traffic. We are planning to do performance tests to check uh, if the install rate uh, and if the packet rate uh, degrades with some patches. We need to add more and more test uh, cases for testing queue disks. And uh, we are evaluating inclusion for the CKI project, which is a bigger, bigger project uh, for kernel continuous integration, when uh, TDC will provide enough coverage. And then we need to fix the loose dependency on IPRoute 2 because many breakages happen just because uh, a commit in IPRoute 2 broke um, the current behavior. There is a way to fix this and it's use the JSONified output. 
for Apache, it's much easier because uh, everything that is in the future is in this nice to-do list on uh, the Apache project GitHub. I'm done. Any questions? Uh, Till uh, left some candies here, so many questions? <laughs> So how are we doing so in the VMs? Cool. So, uh, no, we are, I'm not planning to... Uh, sorry, the question if, uh, is if we are planning to test driver changes. So the TC layer should not impact on driver, but on some case, in some cases it does, because uh, uh, TC action and TC classifiers can be offloaded. So in case a driver offloads a rule and the driver does not behave correctly, that's a problem. The solution for this is to use plugins. So if you use the uh, NS plugin, you can specify a network device and uh, all the tests will flow through this network device. So you install the TC action on a specific device and this, in this way you will be testing drivers. Am I planning to test patches for drivers? No. I don't think it's feasible with this infrastructure just because it's too slow. CKI is, is the correct thing to do. Speaking of CKI, Jim is not here. We are CKI. We are all here. Yeah. I know you. Yeah. You so are famous. We are going to be in the next room, the next, the next presentation. Me too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more questions? There's some extra content. So the Git configuration. Um, uh, the dashboard, uh, as soon as you log in, you can just put the script on the server and uh, uh, configure email notifications. And the configure uh, the uh, Git uh, um, repository. For GitHub, uh, it was quite tricky for me to find it. So maybe there's a reference for somebody. <laughs> this is the test script. It's very easy. So I just uh, copy a minimal configuration of the kernel. I compile the kernel, I run a virtual machine with that kernel, and uh, the, as soon as the virtual machine uh, uh, turns off, uh, I grab uh, for uh, results, and that's it. Oh, this is the traffic on uh, Netsked in the uh, latest uh, two years. It's not much. And that's why we can leverage on a light platform to do this kind of work. Why did the test test, test case fail? <laughs> because the configuration of the kernel was run. I was testing ABPF without compiling the support for uh, um, SHA sum. And so uh, the BPF syscall failed systematically. Well, yes, it could do this. So the question is, uh, does it report uh, the test failure to mailing list? It can do this. Uh, for testing purposes, it's better to stay, uh, to, to be really careful when doing this because uh, we don't want to spam the mailing list. Mm -hmm. So you basically have to go to the mailing list and tell to that person, hey, yeah, the yeah. Is not That's exactly right. what typically happens. Thank you very much.